Mark Shaparo had some more things to say, and most importantly about the Dalton Varsho trade that went down in the offseason prior. Some people hate it. Most people hate it. Some people liked it. So I'll break that down on this episode of Jay's Digest, as well as Kevin Gosman. He called out some media members, and he was not happy with what went down the other day. So we'll have that and much more coming up next. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Vrionis, alongside host Nick Goss. Mark Shapiro, the quotes keep rolling in. The content keeps flowing. We're hoping that you're all enjoying these two videos a day. Don't know how much longer it's going to last for because the news is going to start to die down eventually. But right now we are riding this wave. I mean, there's a lot of news coming out right now with Mark Shapiro, Ross Atkins, John Schneider, Kevin Jose Barrios. Take your pick. It's, it's all bad. It's all bad right now for the Toronto Blue Jays. There's not much positive, but we're going to try to stay optimistic here, and we're going to talk about Mark Shapiro speaking out about the Dalton Varsho trade a little bit more in depth. He had a few choice words to say to a reporter who called him out on it, and, and reporters who were present at the press conference were not exactly happy with the job that Mark Shapiro and Ross Atkins have done this season and they were quick to call them out so shout out to those people that were in attendance over there and Kevin Gosman as well some controversy over there so yeah not much uh, not much to smile about right now if you're a Toronto Blue Jays fan but news sometimes is good sometimes is bad right now it's not the greatest but uh, there are some things to look forward to if you are a Jays fan yeah, and before we get into all that, make sure to hit the subscribe button. About 70% of you guys aren't subscribed. would mean the world. We're on the road to 10,000. Now, Peter, we have some stuff to uh, to go over today, and it just keeps flowing. Kevin Gosman dipped his toes into the uh, the drama. Not the direct Mark Shapiro drama, like some may have thought, but let's start with uh, the Shapiro stuff. So someone, a reporter, you know, pressed Mark Shapiro is the best way to put it, saying, you know, he this was after Mark Shapiro, you know, praised Ross Atkins' ability to make moves and his ability to manage the team. Someone basically said, what are you going to do about Ross Atkins' horrible moves? And then Shapiro asked him to elaborate, and he said, the horrible Moreno and Lourdes for Varsho trade. And he, quote, said, I still feel like that was a good trade, and it takes multiple years to assess a deal properly. Now, Peter, you can't evaluate this trade in the short term. You've got to give it four or five years to understand whether a trade was effective or not. Now... We, you know, a lot of fans out there are really upset with the Moreno trade and things like that. And I think this is about as good as of a response that you could have gotten from Mark Shapiro because I tend to agree with him in this situation. I'm not sure if you feel any different. Like evaluating a trade, especially one where you're trading a, basically a young player for a young player, evaluating it after one year wouldn't make, you know, any sense whatsoever. If you flip the years that Varsho and Moreno were having, then, you know, I'm sure the fans on the other side would be kind of be saying the same thing. But. Peter, what are your thoughts on the trade at this point on Shapiro's comments here? I'm still a fan of the trade. Obviously, it doesn't look great right now because Moreno is performing in the playoffs. But, I mean, we had three catchers. The Braves or the Diamondbacks weren't going to take Alejandro Kirk in exchange for Dalton Varsho. And, I don't know, a horrible year for Varsho. I'll give you that, at least at the offensive side of things. But, I mean, I don't know. I think it was at least the right process of a trade. As Though I feel like some of you guys will definitely disagree with my take there. Yeah, I mean, hindsight is also twenty twenty. It's easy to say now that the trade has been a, a massive failure, but it's not even the case. Obviously, Moreno has caught lightning in a bottle here. He hit under 10 home runs in the regular season. Seven. Now he's got three. He, yeah, he's, he hit seven home runs in the regular season. Now he's got three in the playoffs. I mean, any player can get hot for a whatever game stretch that, that he's getting hot for. And I think Moreno is going to be a great player. Once the trade broke, once the news broke, we were quick to say Moreno is going to be a great player. We didn't discredit him and his ability as a prospect. I think he's going to be a fantastic catcher for a long time. But if you look at the Toronto Blue Jays perspective, they had two very good catchers. Alejandro Kirk was an all-star last year. He was a guy that hit 285, who was in the middle of the Blue Jays order pretty good offensive team as well and he was a key cog in that lineup you know his um his wife gave birth in the off season you know he had a, he had some distractions as well he came into spring training late that's fine you know this year was a bit of a wash for Alejandro Kirk but defensively he's much better than Gabriel Moreno and people don't want to talk about that because it doesn't fit their narrative and when you look at Danny Jansen who's I, I could say the backup catcher or, or 1A, 1B in a sense. Danny Jansen's one of the best hitting catchers in all of baseball. His OPS is consistently around 800 when he stays in the lineup and when he's healthy. And that's the only thing with him is that he can't stay healthy on a regular basis. But when he is, I mean, I would take him over pretty much any catcher besides 
five of them in the league, I would say, and that might even be generous. So the Blue Jays dealt from a position of strength with Gabriel Moreno. He wouldn't have even caught maybe 15 games this year. Maybe with the injury to Danny Jansen, he would have caught a little bit more because he would have had to be forced in there. But I guarantee you, he would have started the year in AAA. Yeah. And I, I mean, what are we talking about here? We traded basically a minor leaguer who came into his own with regular playing time with the Arizona Diamondbacks, which he wouldn't have gotten in Toronto for a guy in Dalton Varsho who hit 27 home runs last year, led the league in defensive uh, in defensive runs saved, who's going to be the everyday center fielder starting next season for the Toronto Blue Jays. And mind you, that's going to up his value significantly. He's going to go from a three-and-a-half win player to probably a five-win player because he's going to lead the league in defensive runs saved again. He's probably going to have a bounce-back offensive season, and he's going to be a key part of this Blue Jays team for years to come. He's a young, controllable asset, and I, I just I, I get why fans are frustrated because Moreno is performing well, but we got to look at the other side of the coin as well, and Dalton Varsho is a pretty damn good player, does a lot of things right, and was not the only reason why the Blue Jays didn't meet expectations this year. Yeah, and I already know, I can see it right now, we're going to get a lot of you know people in the comments disagreeing, so that's fine if you do, you know, stay cordial down there, but I mean, what you said is the same way I kind of feel about it, and regardless of what happens in the future, will Moreno be a better player in Varsha? There's a possibility that it happens, but at the time of the trade, which is really how you should evaluate, at least for now, one year in, it was definitely the right trade. Like you said, Varsha hit 20 home runs last year, he hit 220, he came into his own a bit at the end of the season you know the hitting peripherals aren't really the best but look at the defense the defense was phenomenal but then you have moreno here as well who also had a very very solid um you know season especially at the defensive end now it, you know kirk is a way better framer moreno's a better thrower so you can kind of make up your 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 whatever you value to defense more regarding who's a better defender but the point is even you if, even if you give moreno the slight edge people underrate kirk's defensive abilities Every single time I talk about him, maybe because of his his frame and his stature, but he is one of the best catchers on the defensive end. He's elite at framing. He's very, very good at blocking, and he has an average arm. So, mm -hmm. And he manages the pitching staff phenomenally. So, I don't know. I'm a big Kirk fan. He's going to bounce back 100%. But, I mean, Gabriel Moreno, I understand why fans are upset. He had an absolutely phenomenal season. He had, well, it's a solid season. He had a very, very phenomenal postseason run so far. But, I mean, at the end of the day, um, I think we all have to realize that one of them had to go. And whether that they weren't going to trade Danny Jansen, most likely. So it was either going to be Kirk or Moreno. and would have got less package for Alejandro Kirk just because, I mean, Moreno was a top 100 prospect. I think like a top 10 prospect in baseball at the time with the biggest knock being power. And despite this offseason or the postseason run, Moreno's biggest question mark going forward, if you talk to people you know, around actual like baseball analysts, they say the power is the biggest thing. It's always been a problem with Moreno. He has never hit for power in his entire career. And hopefully for his sake and you know the Diamondbacks' sake, he figures it out. I would love to see nothing more than our former prospects succeed. But there's still a lot of question marks about him. And of course, the same thing about Alejandro Kirk. Maybe he had a you know, fluke year last year. But at the end of the day, let's wait two to three more years, see where we are from there. Or at least wait one more year to see if Varsho, you know, had a chance to uh, to do good. And hopefully he, he does next year. But I think, you know, we're, we're going to get a lot of people hating on us for this take. But I think most people would, uh, if you look at it from like a, a third person point of view, yeah, it looks bad now. I don't think it's going to look nearly as bad in eight months. Yeah, and uh, I think the part that hurt the most about the trade was losing Lourdes Gurriel Jr., because that was a big bet in the lineup. That's a guy that's consistently going to hit in the high 200s for you. Uh, he found his power stroke again this year after healing up from that hand injury, and that was a piece that was missing on this Blue Jay team because Whit Merrifield had to play a lot of left field. He did an adequate job, but he's not a power hitter, and, and he's not a guy that you can really rely upon in the middle of the order like you could with Lourdes Gurriel Jr. in years past. So I think that's another reason why people were upset at the trade, but he's going to be a free agent this offseason, yeah. and who knows where he's going to end up. So it was essentially a one-for-one -one swap between Varsho and Moreno, and I think Varsho is going to bounce back. I mean, you got to get a new philosophy. You got to get a new approach in your in your coaching staff when it comes to the hitting department. And I think he's going to unlock some of that power that he had. He played in a in a ballpark that is not hitter friendly at all last year, and he hit twenty seven home runs. 20. NL West is a hard to yeah no no twenty seven in Arizona. Oh Arizona twenty seven yeah he did in Arizona. Yeah, he hit in a hitter uh, in a pitcher's ballpark yeah, in 
with a division that has the San Francisco Giants, another pitcher's ballpark, the L.A. Dodgers, another pitcher's ballpark, and um, obviously Colorado, it is what it is. Like you hit home runs over there, but it's it's you know he had a good season. He's not going to be a guy that hits two eighty or, or three hundred for you, but if he can have that amount of power back to to slug nearly thirty home runs and play not only elite defense, the best defense in center field, then you take that every year. And sorry to say, but uh, goodbye, Moreno. I mean, it's it's unfortunate that they had to say goodbye to a top prospect, but Varsho's a pretty good player, and you guys are going to figure that out next year. So hate on the trade all you want. Hate on us all you want. But it's going to be, uh, it's gonna be a, a great season for him next year. I'm calling it right now. Book it. And for Alejandro Kirk as well. I know a lot of the pain is because Kirk had a horrible year. Yeah. I'm betting on his bounce back. So there's a lot of ways the trade could look good, but we'll let you leave your uh, your your spirited comments. Do them in well, uh, you know, with well and good intentions. But quickly, Peter, before we wrap up, Kevin Gosman called out the media saying it's ridiculous us players are to watch what we say in our clubhouse and then went on to say that some of y'all, all I'm saying is that you should not be allowed to quote a player or say what you heard like this in a clubhouse when you, the reporter, are not talking to that player. Now, Peter, this is regarding the Orlando RCA incident with the Bryce Harper stuff. Go check up on that if you want. But just a quick thing, Peter, address this before we wrap up. Uh, I don't know. I don't even know if I agree with him necessarily because it's just the way reporters and stuff work. If a reporter hears something, you're going to say it. You're going to, you know, tweet it out. It's kind of your job. But I understand the premise from a player standpoint. But Gosman was getting a lot of heat by fans for this uh, comment. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a fair point to say, but everything is fair game once you're in that locker room yeah. and and if you're a reporter. So it's unfortunate for Orlando Arcia. I think the Braves are more so pissed off because it, it woke up the beast that is Bryce Harper, and he absolutely torched them the game after. And then Orlando Arcia might be on his way out of the league after that, after getting stared down by Bryce Harper in that kind of fashion. So uh, the Phillies have been electric. We've been texting each other back and forth, Nick saying that we wish the Blue Jays would play this way. This is what we thought they would be like heading into the season, and they were far from it. But uh, honestly, the rest of the way, I'm rooting for the Phillies. What a fantastic organization. What a fantastic run that they've had in the past couple of years. Maybe not the greatest regular season team, but man, did they show up in the playoffs. Trey Turner, uh, Kyle Schwarber, Nick Castellanos Everyone. last night. I mean, that team is just so much fun to watch, and uh, that, that's what a ball club looks like. I'll tell you that much. Hopefully the Jays can do that next season. And shout out to their Canadian manager, name slipping me, but shout out to him. and uh, Rob Thompson. Rob, Rob Thompson, Thompson, shout out to you. And shout out to Arden Zwelling for holding it down there on the reporting in Philly. But that'll wrap up the video. Thank you all for watching. If you want to see your video from earlier today, click on your screen now. We'll see you guys tomorrow.